Hey everybody, my name is Derek. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a new chop saw here in the shop. This is a metal cutoff saw that uses the carbide tipped blades that look like your standard wood blades, but are actually meant for cutting steel. Now some of you guys might be saying, hey, you already have a metal, metal cutting saw, why do you need another one? And there's a few reasons for that. Basically, this saw has a bunch of advantages over the abrasive chop saws. And no matter what people say, the uh, abrasive chop saws, that's my Hercules I keep down there, the abrasive chop saw, you cannot go putting these metal blades on top of an abrasive saw or inside of an abrasive saw. They just don't work, they're not compatible, these blades, require a certain speed and I'm pretty sure it's a lower RPM than an abrasive chop saw but a lot more torque. So real quick I thought I'd go over the advantages of having one of these chop saws, one of these metal tooth carbide tipped chop saws. The number one thing being for me especially is cutting speed. I've used these before. I used to have a job. I'm not going to go into details on it but I used one of these tools semi-regularly and it was way faster than any abrasive chop saw I've ever used. So the abrasive chop saws get this coating on them. You know, usually it happens when I'm cutting really thick, heavy material, uh, big material. Uh, it gets clogged up and I have to go through and chip everything off the abrasive blade so that I can continue using it because it doesn't cut very well when it gets that coating on it. So again, the first advantage is that one of these is way faster than an abrasive chop saw. Now, the second reason why they have a big advantage is because these carbide tooth blades are supposed to last significantly longer than abrasive blades. You're supposed to be able to buy one of these for the same amount of cuts that you would get out of like five abrasive blades or something to that effect. I'm not saying that anybody or any company is making that claim. Um, it's just supposed to be more inexpensive, even though the blades are way more upfront, this blade right here is like $100 to replace. You're supposed to get way more cuts out of it than you will out of any one, two, three or more uh, abrasive chop saw blades. I'm sure that depends on how you use it. I'm sure that depends on how careful you are. Uh, lots of things like that. So it's supposed to save you money over time. Um, and then definitely is a faster cut. So the only disadvantage that I can really think of off the top of my head over these things is, well, number one, I didn't notice this thing was quite a bit heavier, but number two and number one probably really isn't much of a disadvantage. This one will probably stay in my shop and not really leave. It's more of the fabrication shop, uh, saw for me. Where the chop saw, if I pour concrete or whatever, it'll cut my rebar and things like that. Anyway, getting to that real um, disadvantage of this is just having to fork out a bunch of money uh, at once for a new blade. So if I start noticing this blade is doling up, then I'm gonna have to make sure I've got a hundred bucks laying around that I can use to go and spend on a new blade. So there are mostly advantages to getting one of these saws. I guess the two disadvantages is that the saw does cost more up front. Uh, you know, we'll do a 1B, not that it's related to the number one, but it is a little bit heavier. But then number two is just that you have to have a bunch of money to fork out for a new blade if your blade doles up. So from what I understand, Evolution is more on the inexpensive side of these saws. I know that you can spend a lot more money than one of these things. I think even like the Ironton one from Northern Tool, is that right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going off of memory here. Pretty sure that those are even more expensive and that's like, you know, kind of an off-brand, just Chinese knockoff with a, with Northern Tools house brand labeled on it, um, if that makes sense. From what I do understand though, is that these Evolution chop saws are supposed to be really good quality for what they do cost. Like I said, I already have an Evolution saw. It's the miter saw and it is a multi-material cutting saw but it's definitely set up more as like a wood cutting saw. So there's a lot of good uses for that one, but I just felt like using it too much with steel and cutting steel with it was that I'd just be going, number one, I'd be going through blades way too often with it. And uh, number two, just that I was really gonna wear it out, you know, beat it up a little bit too much because it had like an aluminum base on it and get that nice and tight. And I, I just felt like if I used it too much for cutting steel, that eventually I would just really beat the thing up, knock something out of square, I don't know. Uh, also, the, they just, the blades on that one just didn't really last very long when cutting steel. So my idea for that one is just to buy the wood blades for it from here on out and use it just simply as a wood cutting miter saw because I need one of those. And that one will work perfectly for that because it's not very often that I cut really big pieces of wood. Um, not that it's super often that I cut 
big pieces of steel with one of these either. But uh, I do probably cut more steel generally than I do cut wood. But that's just me. So that's one of the reasons why I felt like it was definitely worth it to pick up one of these uh, 14 inch evolution saws with the carbide tipped blades. So I actually just thought of another advantage of one of these saws versus an abrasive saw. An abrasive saw will heat up the metal really hot. It is basically cutting by removing the material with abrasive material, which creates a ton of heat, where this cuts away small little chips from the material, which uh, allows for a lot less heat to be transferred into the material. So, you know, sometime if I forget to put on my gloves like I did just now for this cut, then I'll be able to grab the piece of material without burning my fingers. And then one more advantage I thought was worth mentioning is, a lot of the time there is a flex in the abrasive blade, where uh, this is much more rigid because it's like an eighth inch steel piece of, well, steel. And when I cut at an angle, it kind of uh, tends to shear off if I'm a little bit too far to the side. If that blade can make its way uh, off to the edge, it'll start cutting at a diagonal and it'll just flex that blade to the side and cut. So uh, that is another advantage with one of these where it doesn't have that flex. So I'm gonna get way more accurate cuts for fabricating. I've got a small project to do and I think I'm gonna use this piece of material. I just need to cut off the bad ends because it's of course a used piece of material like pretty much everything I have. So I thought I'd go ahead, whoops. I thought I'd go ahead and use the saw to cut the ends off and give it a try. Yeah, see I can touch the very edge of it with my bare fingers. It's maybe just a little bit warmer than uh, the piece of material, the original piece of material that was cut. Yep, right on the edge, very cool. Cut number two. One thing I'm noticing is that it does leave little burrs at the end, which I was kind of under the impression it wasn't supposed to do that. But I definitely think that's better than the abrasive chop saws. So that's probably another advantage to them over the abrasive chop saws. If you're not convinced yet, I don't even know if I'm gonna try and think of any more. I've given like five reasons at this point. These are definitely significantly better tools than the abrasive counterparts. I thought of one other advantage to the dry cut saws over the abrasive chop saws. As you know, just like with an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, as you cut with the abrasive chop saw blade, it's going to lose material as you're cutting away steel material. So over time, that chop saw blade is going to get shorter and shorter, limiting the max thickness of steel or the max height of steel that you're able to cut with that abrasive chop saw. Where with the dry cut saw, if your max is five inches thick, is a five inch tall piece of steel, you will always be able to cut a five inch tall piece of steel. Where the abrasive, you'll go from five five inches to four inches to three inches to then you got to probably get rid of the blade at that point. So that is one more advantage to the dry cut saws over the abrasive chop saws. <clears throat> All right, I should be able to finish this cut now. For those of you that have been around for all my talking about the Hercules chop saw and why it doesn't, uh, why I wish I had a quick adjust on it for the fence, for the angle adjustment, that is exactly why, because this is such a simple mechanism, it works fantastic, super quick and easy to use. I don't have to use a tool to change the angle that I want to use on this fence.
No burrs on that one. Real nice cut. Well guys, I've uh, done a very, very small project with this saw at this point. And <laughs> I think I made, what, about five or six cuts total with the thing. So I haven't exactly put it through its paces or anything like that. And that's pretty much the uh, point that we're left at with this tool. We just got to see how well it holds up over time. I'm expecting it to. Evolution is, I think, a pretty good brand. I think they put together some pretty good tools at especially some pretty good prices. So... Um, as far as I know, you know, these are kind of, these Evolution chop saws are kind of the saws to buy. I got the best fit up. I mean, this is a really simple little project, but I got the best fit up I've ever had on a welding project that I've ever done uh, with this uh, evolution carbide tipped metal cutoff saw you know it was significantly better than I've ever gotten with a chop saw I did notice they include this little tool that is for cutting square tubing I tried using it with the rectangular tubing and I guess I should have known better but it didn't work um, because it helps the blade last longer if you cut at an angle like I'm not sure that this will come up on camera but if you start cutting here first and then the blade will start making its way down the other sides and it just slides really nicely over the clamp here which that clamp is really smooth. Uh, very basic style here, like any other top saw I've ever used. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I've got a real uh, metal cutting fabricating saw here. Compared to what I've been using, compared to what I've had in the past, it's a pretty great saw. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you can go down and give it a big thumbs up. I hope that if you're not a subscriber, you'll go down and click subscribe. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope to see you in my next one.